and thank you guys for joining us today for best practices for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events supporting multiple charities. We'll get started in just a minute, but a couple of quick housekeeping notes off the top. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this, you can put them into the questions block on your GoToWebinar module. Um, we will answer them through the, throughout the webinar as we're able. If there's any that are really specific to your event or that we don't get to, we will follow up with you after the webinar. This will be recorded, so if you miss anything or you want to go back and refer to any of the pathways or notes that are mentioned, uh, we'll send out the slides and the recording sometime tomorrow. I think with that, I'll turn it over to Chris. Thank you very much, Johanna, and thanks so much for, uh, for taking care of the housekeeping and wel welcoming everybody to our best practices for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events supporting multiple charities. I am Chris Newcomer. I am the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising lead over here at Run Sign Up, Give Sign Up. Um, so if you've been getting uh, any emails from somebody saying, hey, here is a new release for our fundraising tools and here are a couple examples, it's likely me. Um, so yeah, I'm here to just talk about how, uh, how uh, nonprofits can uh, use this feature to improve their events. So for today's agenda, first we're going to do a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising overview, yeah. just some quick hits to make sure everybody knows it's just sort of the basics of what we have available for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. We'll talk about fundraising teams and we'll talk about charity partners after that and then examples. The reason we're bringing in fundraising teams is we really want to help differentiate between those charity partners and fundraising teams as sometimes there can be a little bit of confusion. So we just want to make sure everybody knows, you know, what tools work and which ones will work best for them. So here is our overview of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. What is P2P? Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising on Give Sign Up combines crowdfunding and events to raise more for charity. You know, there are many setup variations for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events, but in general, participants in events are able to become fundraisers during registration or sometimes even without participating. Um, each fundraiser gets a fundraising page with default language. Fundraisers can customize the page to share what fundraising means to them. Uh, the fundraiser then shares their page with their network of family and friends to raise more. You can see over here we've got the um, uh, New York City Marathon Semper Fi page um, where we've got some examples of one fundraiser page and then also the list of fundraisers. Now, how do you set up fundraising if you've got an event? First, you want to make sure that you have donations turned on. Once donations are turned on, you can click on fundraising on the left side of your uh, race dashboard menu, then click individual fundraisers, and there'll be a prompt that says enable fundraising, which you can click that first. And then you'll see this menu, which features uh, general settings, uh, customizations and display settings, fundraiser rewards and advanced settings. You'll click general settings. There you can include default messaging for your fundraisers. You can include a default fundraising goal, both of which we highly recommend. And then you'll have some rules below that you can engage with, um, which if you have an event where fundraising is there, but it's optional, it's not, you're not gonna sort of um, force everybody to participate in that way, then you can ignore those rules. Or you can um, require that they fundraise. You can require that they are registered if they're going to fundraise. Um, and you can even force them to select a charity uh, if you've got multiple charities listed as well. Um, so who uses peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? We find there are two main use cases for peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, an event is organized by or for a specific charity and all fundraisers raise money for that specific cause. Uh, and the other uh, use case is an event is organized by a third party that partners with several charities and fundraisers can choose which charity they want to fundraise for. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising events are often runs, walks, and rides, but they don't have to be. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising events can be golf tournaments, bowl-a-thons, dance marathons, virtual challenges. Um, one of my favorite ones that I helped uh, get set up, uh, I think four years ago now, is a practice-a-thon, or they call it a play-a-thon. It happens in New Jersey with a youth orchestra where they have their students um, log their uh, practice minutes over a month, and then at the same time they have a fundraiser page they can share out with friends and family, uh, which I think is such a cool, cool use of the tools. How can peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising improve my event? Well, you can increase your impact on your local community. Uh, in 2023, events with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising raised nine times as much as events with just simple donations turned on. Participants who are willing to fundraise for one of your charities are highly invested and likely to continue supporting that charity. It also allows you to reach new participants. Um, you can get your event in front of the supporters of your charities and reach new people who wouldn't have known about your event. You can also incentivize people to sign up to support the charity they already care about, even if the event wasn't something they would typically sign up for. 
So first, we're going to talk about fundraising teams. Um, so what are fundraising teams? Uh, team fundraisers allow individual fundraisers to work collectively towards a fundraising goal. Um, flexible options for joining or creating a fund fundraising team, meaning that you can make it optional that they join a team or require that they join a team. The amounts raised by individuals roll up to the team total. You can prevent or allow donations to the team. And this just means that you require that if someone wants to donate to that team, they have to choose an individual on the team. The reason we have that setting available is sometimes, you know, someone will be still share out their team fundraiser page, their, their aunt might come and try to donate, and then she donates to the team, but she's meant to donate to that person's specific page. This prevents a little more hassle on the back end of having to adjust that donation to an individual um, by forcing that person to choose an individual when they are donating. Um, we've got easy to manage team fundraising pages um, managed by captains. Um, captains can edit their team page, they can add a slideshow, um, and then you as the organizer control what team data the captain can see. So if you just want them to be able to see, you know, shirt size and that's it, then you can do that. Or if you want to give them the contact information of the people on their roster so they can rally them or, or help, you know, get them to fundraise more, you can do that as well. Uh, we also support the ability to have multiple captains per team. Um, to set up fundraising teams, first you have to have donations turned on and individual fundraisers have to be enabled. And this is a really good um, thing to help you sort of visualize how it is set up in our system. You know, you can have um, individual fundraisers, uh, just individual fundraisers, and you can have team fundraisers, but you can't have team fundraisers without individuals because the individuals come together to make up the team. And everyone on a team fundraiser will need their own individual fundraiser page, which is why it's built that way in our system. Um, so once um, donations are set up and once uh, individual fundraisers are turned on, then you'll go to the team fundraiser menu tab, which is just below individual fundraisers. And you got some rules there. And the one you'll want to click is allow users to set up new fundraiser teams. And this will then give folks that option to create a team. Here you can also require that they join a team or not. Um, this is also where that prevent team fundraiser donations choice is, where you can make sure that if someone's aunt has come and wants to uh, donate to that individual, she'll have to choose an individual from the team. Um, Johanna has created one of my favorite um, images I've ever seen right here, which is it is important to note <laughs> that race groups and teams are not the same as fundraising teams. This is something you probably heard from us many times, and it's very true. Um, we've got a race group and team where people can come if the event is focused on the social aspect. So say you want to be able to have folks who want to get together as a team, but they're not really worried about fundraising or uh, they want to just make, organize their group. Um, this is a great use for that. Um, but if your event is focused on fundraising, it might be better just to have fundraising teams turned on as we do not recommend having both turned on at the same time. It can cause confusion. We're going to have a similar conversation a little bit later about fundraising teams and charity partners, as there can be a little confusion there too. We wanna to make sure that uh, the settings you turn on for your event are the exact um, makeup of the ones you actually need for what your constituents want. Um, let's see, okay, so fundraising teams with charity partners. So if you have multiple charity partners, the creator of a fundraising team will pick the associated charity partner. So once that's chosen, um, anyone who comes to that person's team page and joins from their team page, their individual page will automatically be chosen for that charity partner. So it's all sort of streamlined in that way. Um, so everyone's sort of lined up um, from individual to fundraiser to charity partner. Individual to, in, yeah, individual to team fundraiser to charity partner. <laughs> Let me be very clear. <laughs> I know my colleague Nancy is on this call who is one of the our great account management uh, folks and she's very focused on these fundraising events. And so I wanna make sure I get this right for her because I know that she, uh, she cares about this as much as I do. Um, you can update your fundraiser team language. So you can adjust the language for team fundraiser or the language for create or join a fundraiser team uh, to match your event. So if you want to call fundraisers schools or um, or, or classrooms or, or whatever it is to, to reflect um, what um, what your organization does. For instance, that orchestra that, that uses us, um, I think they use the term ensemble. Um, for team fundraisers because people are like in the, the orchestra or in the band, that kind of thing. So it really helps customize what you're presenting to your folks. Um, we've got some additional options for fundraiser teams. You can add team fundraiser questions to ask folks as they're joining a team. 
You can also set up team milestones and badges. Milestones and badges exist at the individual fundraiser level and then they also do for the team. So it's a great way to gamify the experience and encourage your team members to um, share their pages out and fundraise even more. So here's some pros and cons of using fundraising teams. You know, you're tapping into the social reach of your participants to bring in more donations, which is incredible. Um, you're providing a sense of community for your participants as they come together to support a charity. Um, using the fundraiser leaderboard, you can even increase the competitive element to encourage teams to raise even more. And I think that competitive element really does come through with teams. People like want to work together to, to, to be the best, you know. Um, some cons that come with using uh, fundraising teams is coaching and encouraging team captains can sometimes require a heavier touch from event organizers. Um, and it's maybe not a great option if you have social teams turned on, which is what we were sort of saying earlier. Um, it's not necessarily a match to have all the both, both settings turned on at the same time. So reporting for fundraising teams. Uh, fundraising report for event director shows individual and team fundraiser information. Um, you can also um, uh, specify that report so you're only seeing individuals or you're only seeing teams. Um, the fundraising team captains can access rosters of their fundraising team, and they're going to see data that you have uh, okayed them to see. Only, only the, the information you want them to see is what they'll see. Um, and additional reports are available for fundraiser team captains, uh, for top fundraisers, and for team fundraiser giveaways under the fundraiser report generator. Now we're going to dig into charity partners, which is, I'm sure, why a lot of you have joined us, which is awesome. Um, so what are charity partners? Well, they are the organization or organizations your event is fundraising for. You can have just one charity partner. Um, this is a great option if you're a registration event and you've taken on you know, a nonprofit you wanna support and you wanna make sure that those funds are divided. So with a charity partner, you can have it so um, your, your nonprofit partner comes in, they accept their charity dashboard and then all their funds for donation will go to them. All the funds with registration will go to you. So this is a great way to keep that separate so you don't have to um, get involved in any of, of the donation monies. Um, charity partners also allow events to support multiple charities um, and fundraisers with, uh, who are, have the options for multiple charities get to choose the one that they want to support. Um, donors also get to select the charity uh, they want to donate to. So in this instance, so say I were donating just to the event in general, I would have the ability to choose which charity I wanted to donate to. If I'm choosing one of the fundraisers that's listed or a fund, someone who sent me their fundraiser page, my donation will go to the charity that that fundraiser has chosen. So what's it look like when you have charity partners and fundraisers? So you can see um, on this page, uh, this is a, a charity partner. And, and now when you go to the donate page, you can see there's a charity tab and a fundraiser tab. So in this instance, We've got just fundraisers, individual fundraisers turned on and charities. And so um, you can see that list of charities, you can see that list of fundraisers, you can click into either of them and read more information. Um, you can see on the setup here of this bec becoming a fundraiser uh, page, uh, all the charities that are listed in the drop down that people can choose as they're signing up. Um, to set up charity partners, first donations must be turned on before you can set that up. Um, you can include some basic charity details, you know, their logo, a URL description, similar to the kind of information you'd put in if you're adding a sponsor. Um, you can add custom details to the donation confirmation email that are specific to that charity. Um, you can set the default messaging for fundraisers for that charity. So you saw earlier we'd set the default messaging at the individual level, at the team level, and now you can do the same thing based on each charity. Um, Direct payments can be set up by the charity. If they come in and they accept their charity dashboard, then they're able to um, see some more information, which we'll go over a little bit later as well. So the pros and cons of using charity partners. Um, pros, you're supporting a nonprofit organization that you want to help. Um, you're increasing the reach of your event by engaging specific audiences, ones that are engaged with those charity partners. Um, and you're offering flexibility where multiple charities are being offered. Um, some cons, you know, some greater complexity requires more communication and where there are more options comes the possibility of participant confusion. So the more things you add in, I think the more it's good to be ready for questions that come up and the good, the, the best thing to do is invest in a really good FAQ page. So anytime you get a question, I would say more than once, you can add that to your FAQ page because it means it's going to come up uh, a couple times and people will want that information. So always good to be 
communicating as much as you can, especially when it comes to um, making sure that folks who are wanting to donate or wanting to support are getting all the information that they need to do so. So what does your charity partner see? Um, your charity partner will get an email to set up their payment to, do to receive that direct payment from us. Um, it can be merged with an existing charity partner, i.e. if they've already set up their charity partner for another race, um, that's, this race will then just be added to their charity partner dashboard. Um, you can link an existing payment account or create a new payment account. And the payment account allows for, as I said, direct payment to that charity partner so that you, if you're just an organization that's supporting a charity, you don't have to worry about touching any of those funds. Now, the charity dashboard um, allows uh, charities to directly access and edit the organization information displayed uh, under their race list. They can see um, for each specific race which uh, what information they're displaying about their charity. Um, they can see donation and fundraiser reports. They can see financial reports, which include payments and donation summaries. Um, if the event has allowed them to do manual donations, they can, they can do that as well. Um, and then they can also see their payment account setup and options. And then you also can give access, multiple people can have access to the charity dashboard and it can be either full access or it can be limited to just, uh, just, you know, just view only. You can do some fine grained permissions, which are really handy and helpful. Um, so some reports that charity partners see, this is a, uh, they can download a CSV on do their donation report for individual donation information, including name, email, amount. Um, they can also see a list of their fundraisers as well. <clears throat> uh, some reports that the race will see, the donation report shows uh, donation totals by charity partner. So they're able to see the total donations to each charity partner, the amount paid directly, any offline donations, and any money still owed to the charity. Um, individual donation report and fundraiser reports will also include a field for a charity partner. So now we're going to go over some customer examples. Um, uh, first, we'll do some standard examples of folks who are sort of using it in the way it was originally designed for, which is uh, for charity partners. And so uh, for the Hattiesburg Half Marathon, it supports 10 local charity partners and they have individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers um, turned on so they can select the charity they want to support. So you can see, as we saw earlier, there, when someone goes to their donate page, they'll see the list of charities, they'll see the list of fundraisers. Um, so they're not having any team fundraising with this event and it works in a nice simple way for them. Now we've got the main marathon, which supports 53 charity partners. And these people can be fundraised as an individual and they can fundraise as a team. Um, fundraisers and fundraising teams pick the charity they want to support. So you can see there are three tabs there. You've got the charity, the individual fundraiser, and the team fundraiser. And this is something I just want to hit on because this is where there can be a little confusion. I think sometimes people think, oh, well, I've selected this charity to fundraise for. That's the team that I'm on. And if you want to keep it simple that way, that is totally great. That works that way. But allowing team fundraisers allows for me to say, hey, my name is Chris and I want to fundraise for the, the local opera company, but I want to do it in honor of my voice teacher. So I'm doing it for Team Arneson. And so that way it allows them to get their small group of folks together on a team working towards that charity goal. Now, if you find that level of complexity um, won't work for your folks or, or be, would be too confusing, feel free to not turn on team fundraisers. Just use the, the, the things that you need uh, to make it uh, work just for, for what your, your folks need. Um, we do recommend that you make those decisions, you know, at the beginning of your event and you don't adjust them <laughs> in the middle because it can cause confusion if you turn some stuff on and folks sign up using those things and then turn them off. So we do recommend sort of sticking with your plan for the year, obviously, unless there's some sort of like big catastrophe and of course you can change. Um, but just best practice if you can make a plan at the beginning of your event and stick through it, uh, hopefully that will, will stand you in good stead. Here's some out of the box examples. We've got the Run of Hope um, and they've set up their charity partners to represent the individual funds within their larger organization. So it's all going to the same payment account, but by using the charity partner, they can see um, what amount of their total donations are supposed to go to their specific funds. They've got pediatric cancer immunotherapy research, pediatric brain tumor research. So it really allows, you know, sort of larger nonprofits to, to specify the funds and where those, that money uh, should be going. It also allows fundraisers and donors to pick the fund they want to, to support, and it has clean reporting for those fund transfers. 
this is one of my favorites. This is the Salesian Sisters Fund Nun Run. And so they've set up their charity partners to represent different convents within their archdiocese. Um, teams are not used, but some schools used fundraisers to work together and the goal collectively in effect um, uh, viewing the convent or charity partner as the larger team. So that's sort of what I was referring to. So yeah, people are fundraising as individuals, but basically using the charity partners in this way, that does sort of become their larger quote unquote team. Um, but yeah, just things to, to take stock of and how people have engaged with your fundraising in the past. If you think maybe they'd be happy to fundraise as individuals, they don't care so much about doing it with friends and family, then stick with individuals. If you have folks, especially if it's a cause focused event, um, who would really want to fundraise for a loved one or for an event, you know, uh, this is a good place to have teams and allow people to uh, bring folks together in support of their own specific reason for being there, you know. And now I'm going to talk about a great new release we have for charity partners, which is the charity partner leaderboard, which we're very excited about. So there are two new charity partner leaderboards available. Um, races that partner with multiple charity partners can now feature a charity partner leaderboard on their website B2 that features charity partners in order of the amount raised. And so if you'll see in the top of my screen, what this looks like, is will sort of be listed in order of the amount, uh, the, the, the charity partner that has raised the most uh, to the least. Um, if you don't want to feature that, you certainly don't have to. Um, one thing that has been turned on automatically for all charity partners is now they can display a list of top fundraisers on their charity page, which is also very exciting. And so it shows by default for any charity partner with fundraisers. And hopefully I did not put you to sleep, but that is our webinar on uh, charity partners. And I'm so happy you joined us. Uh, Johanna, did we get any questions that came in or, or how, how do you, give me, give me a, how did I do? Give me a gold star, you know? <laughs> I think I can give you a gold star. Um, no one has sent in any rants complaining. Um, Wonderful. And I think we got, uh, I think we got all of our questions answered. So thank you very much. My pleasure. You know, if you do have questions for us, you can always uh, reach out to us at info at givesignup.com. You can reach me at chris at givesignup.org. Um, we're happy to talk further about the fundraising tools and how they can work for you. Thanks. See you guys later. Thanks, everybody.